May I, of course, recognize my colleagues and participants here at the head table, starting, of course, with um, Honorable Dr. Fenton Ferguson, the chair of CAFA, executive board, and our Minister of Health of Jamaica, and your own Dr. Fort Kern, the Minister of Health of Trinidad and Tobago, our Secretary General of CARICOM, Ambassador Iraq, and I recognize, of course, our former retired Secretary General, Ambassador Edwin Carrington, Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, and Ambassador Robert Kopecki, representative of the EU delegation, Dr. James Hospitalis, the new executive director of CAFA, the other distinguished members of government who are here, members of the diplomatic and consular corps, representatives of development agencies, members of the CAFA executive board, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. If we were not really aware of why we were here, I think the musical strains from the pan, from the strings, and from the drum a moment ago at the interlude definitely would have reminded us that the occasion is one of celebration, celebrating the triumph of the spirit of regionalism. And so today, here we are gathered in this very splendid environment of the National Academy of the Performing Arts in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, to celebrate an extraordinary achievement that is the official launching of the Caribbean Public Health Agency. And this is indeed a very timely gift to the people of the Caribbean community which marks its 40th anniversary at the Conference of Heads of Government beginning tomorrow and spreading over three days. And so I am indeed pleased as CARICOM lead head for human resources, for health and HIV AIDS, to be part of this celebration today and to bring you warm greetings on behalf of my colleague heads of government, we all recognize that CAFA is indeed a triumph of the spirit of regionalism. This launching is taking place at a time when CARICOM is really groping for initiatives that build on the foundations laid down by the founding fathers, among them, of course, being Errol Barrow. Forbes Burnham and Veer Bird, those who dared to inspire the re-engagement of a Caribbean region, a Caribbean nation, I would say, out of the ashes of a failed federal experiment. It is taking place at a time when we are seeking to identify landmarks, landmarks that build on the institutional arrangements so clearly enunciated in our Treaty of Chagaramas that made bold provisions for knitting the economic, social, and political fabric of our individual nation states into a dynamic, competitive, and cohesive regional collective. Most of all, CAFA is a fitting response a fitting response to the challenge, the challenge of our time to demonstrate that the Caribbean is capable of redefining and redesigning its institutions to better serve the people of the region and at the same time take its place as a center of excellence in the international arena. This is what we are here to celebrate this afternoon. We have heard from the speakers before me of the evolution, of the challenges, 
the vision and aspirations of CAFA. And from the perspective of the CARICOM heads of government, we approved its establishment based on the overwhelming burden of evidence and the recommendations resulting from discussions and debates by our ministers, discussions by our CMOs and other experts that the consolidation of five institutions into one agency was the most feasible option to us. There were also the lessons from around the world, and there were very many lessons. These included the debates within the World Health Organization on the ideals of health for all, and within PAHO on equity in health. The seminal report of the Caribbean Commission on Health and Development back in 2007 that was chaired by Sir George Aline, our current chancellor of the University of the West Indies, also underscored the need, that great need for revamping the region's approach to public health and help to shape the underlying philosophy of CAFA. In addition, the experiences of Canada, the experiences of the United Kingdom, of the United States of America, and the European Union, they have all provided useful guidelines of public health approaches to us here in the planning and execution of the CAFA project. In the European Union, for example, notwithstanding the very long established health systems within most of its member states, mechanisms for cooperation in health are being promoted, including the European Observatory in Health Systems and Policies, the Association of Schools of Public Health in Europe, the European Health Management Association and the European Public Health Alliance. These studies, all of these studies, these models and policies, decisions notwithstanding, our biggest challenge was coming up with a formula, that necessary formula that best fitted the needs and the peculiar circumstances of our own Caribbean region. It is therefore important to place CAFA in context. The Caribbean community is no longer an experiment, cannot be. It is a reality. It was constructed on the basis of a treaty, the Treaty of Chagaramas in 1973 in this very country. This treaty has evolved through amendments over the past 40 years. And while the establishment of the Caribbean single market and economy is acknowledged the flagship of the integration movement, it is not, and I emphasize, it is not the only yardstick by which to measure the progress made in our regional integration. The Treaty of Chagaramas identified three pillars of integration, including one, trade and economic integration, two, foreign policy and community relations, and three, functional cooperation. But more recently, a fourth pillar, that is crime and security, has been added. And indeed, it must be recognized that long before trade and economic integration component took part or took root, it was in the areas of health, education, and culture that the Caribbean community made its greatest impact on the lives of the Caribbean people. The activities in these areas, singly and collectively, continue to connect the Caribbean people including the Caribbean diaspora, and to project distinctiveness about the Caribbean in the global arena. In particular, in the area of health, cooperation has been an outstanding illustration of what can be gained by acting collectively to achieve outcomes 
that benefit all citizens across the entire region, minimizing the inequities and, of course, maximizing the efficiencies. There is no better modality in principle than the Caribbean Corporation in Health, CCH. The challenges with the CCH, identified in various studies, have to do with a failure, a failure to implement its priorities due to a lack of a consolidated system, and in many cases, because of a lack of resources. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, it is conceived as a response, an appropriate response and a remedy to this particular situation. It is seen as an example, an example of functional cooperation at its highest, as a mechanism by which the health of the people of the Caribbean will be promoted and protected from disease, from injury, from disability, thereby fostering the wellness revolution enunciated in our own Port of Spain declaration back in 2007, unifying to fight the non-communicable diseases. It is also intended to advance the realization embodied in the Nassau Declaration of 2001, that is, the health of the region is the wealth of the region. And so in this regard, it is expected to highlight the opportunity cost of pursuing public health functions in a consolidated way rather than as disparate entities that duplicate efforts and dilute the public health objectives for which they were designed. This, of course, is by no means to suggest that our existing public health institutions that are now embodied in CAFA did not serve the region well. It is not so at all. In many cases, they have functioned under circumstances the challenge, the creativity, and the creative imagination and management capability of the directors of the respective institutions over the many years. And I want to take this opportunity, in particular, to pay tribute to Dr. Beryl Irons. Public health leadership, it is a further demonstration of the creative culture that is now being nurtured. Its mode of operation is indeed consistent with the notion of the vital contribution of health to economic and human development. This could only augur well for the future of our Caribbean region. I particularly expect CAFA to build on and promote the scientific work that could help to transform the way that health policy is being influenced by research, by the strategy for accelerating the infusion of international cooperation, connecting with regional and global health priorities, and simultaneously stimulating, stimulating that dynamism of the Caribbean public health system. These are expectations to be fulfilled. I emphasize this afternoon that the global stage is ready made for CAFA, especially at this time when there is the fermentation of activity around the post-2015 development agenda in fashioning CAFA's existing and, of course, its exciting work program. It is essential, essential to recognize that the world is increasingly characterized by massive shifts in wealth and resource flows, while inequalities in wealth and access to health are increasing within and across our countries. CAFA must therefore be part of the conversation, that conversation that articulates for global health in the post 2015 agenda to ensure that increased wealth actually leads 
to improved health, especially among the poor, that health expenditure is recognized as an investment in human well-being, increased productivity, and national wealth, and that attention must be equally paid to the social determinants of health, which include lifestyle behaviors alluded to by the Minister of Health of Trinidad and Tobago a moment ago. These are the overarching values. Those values which would underscore that meaningful results are achieved from the rationalization and the harnessing of resources to which CARFA is now committed. In this way, CARFA may yet provide a model, a model of how the Caribbean community shapes the future of over 25 regional institutions so that they make a difference in the gamut of services from meteorology to disaster management and climate change through to quality and standards, examinations council, and accreditation to fisheries, agriculture, and crime and security. A review of all of these institutions together with that of the Caribbean Community Secretariat itself is currently undertaken as part of a comprehensive plan. That comprehensive plan to increase the effectiveness and efficiency of how the community does business. The leaders of this region are quite aware that the global economic crisis has engendered a new economic order and escalated a changed political landscape, one with deep structural barriers and access to overseas development assistance. CAFA, it offers an opportunity for the region to revisit, to revisit its own approach to partnership and resource mobilization. I therefore wish to offer profound gratitude. Gratitude to all those development partners that have contributed towards shaping this new landscape, this new landscape of partnership in global health, chief among which are the European Union, the Public Health Agency of Canada, the UK Department of Health, the UK Social Marketing, uh, Marketing Company. Let us give them all a tremendous round of applause for the contribution that they have made. And we are especially grateful to the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, that has nurtured the process, that process of transition and continues to collaborate and chart in the sustainability of CAFA and to the CARICOM Secretariat for anchoring the process. They deserve as well our own applause. No doubt, ladies and gentlemen, as we move ahead, we can expect the consolidation of support from the governments of Brazil and Argentina and many other partners, including the World Bank.